Hi everyone. So today we're going to be talking about biodiversity, which we talked about in the C4 lecture. I wanted to highlight a few terms that you're going to need to know for the quiz on Wednesday. And this will also give you a chance to practice the Simpson Reciprocal Index, which helps you calculate how healthy an ecosystem is based on its levels of biodiversity. So here we go. So I'm going to use the BioNinja page, just like we did with the chi-square practice. So to review what biodiversity is, so look at the word bio meaning living, and then diversity meaning variability. Okay, so it's the variability of living things in an ecological area. So let's look at these two terms right here, species richness and species evenness. So species richness describes the number of different species present in an area. The more species there are, the greater richness there is. This ecosystem would be healthier, or any ecosystem would be healthier, having more species. This keeps the ecosystem safe from any different um, climate actions that could occur or changes in the ecosystem to ensure that there'll be some species left over if something happened. So we would, or a natural disaster happened. So we would say an area that has many species is going to be more rich and it's going to be more healthy overall. Let's look at these two pictures to assess which one is more rich. From what I can tell, they look very similar. And what species are there? It looks like each of these communities have the same four species, as you can see. So we would say that both of these communities, community one and two, are even in their species richness. They have the same species richness. Let's look at the next term, species evenness. Species evenness describes the abundance of the different species in the area. So we would say if there's a more similar abundance, so that meaning every species has about the same amount, it would be more even. The more even an ecosystem is, the more healthy it is biodiversity-wise as well. So what I mean by that is, for example, in community one, you can see that it's very even. Each species, there's four, remember, have 25%, or we can count, let's see, there's one, two, three, four of this species. So that means every species here must have four of them. So I can double check with the pine tree, one, two, three, four, and so forth. So community one is very even. In community two, we can see that that's not the case. They are not as even. So I can see with this tree here, there's only one, where this tree here, there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So it is not as even. So in this case, just describing them, Community 1 and Community 2 are both species rich because they both have four species, but they are not even. So Community 2 would overall be more healthy because it has, oh, I'm sorry, Community 1 would be more healthy overall because it is more even than Community 2. So now let's look at how would we, instead of just describing it the way I did, how could we calculate how diverse it is and how healthy that is. So here is the Simpson Diversity Index formula and we talked about it in the lecture. What we're going to try to solve for is the DI which stands for Simpson Diversity Index. When you get a high value, so here it is, this suggests a stable site with many different niches and low comp competition. So it would suggest high richness and evenness. If you get a low index value, this suggests a site with few potential niches where only a few species dominate. So low richness and evenness. The index value can change though. It's not something that stays all the time. So this number should be collected throughout the course of um, a month or even a year within an ecosystem to understand if the diversity levels, the biodiversity levels have changed. So for example, human intervention or natural disasters can make that ecosystem change, which would change its biodiversity. For example, 
the fires that are happening in the Amazon rainforest that humans are doing to clear area for farming. Um, other natural disasters such as the a mudslide happening in an area and basically changing the whole landscape of a mountainside. So here is a practice question here and they've given you a sample data set. So in site one there are three species, species A, B, and C, and they tell you how many individuals there are. And then there's site two, which has species A and D. And it tells you how many individuals there are. So notice that these sites don't have the same amount of species right away. That's okay. We're trying to compare them to see which one is more diverse, right? Remember, we're looking at two factors, richness and evenness. So this would be site one, and you would calculate it just this way. So the formula, remember, you have two n's. The capital N is the total numbers of individuals collected. And the lowercase n is the total number of individuals of a specific species. So this bottom part of the equation is looking at individuals within a species, where the top part of the equation is looking at the total numbers of individuals found at that site or that ecosystem. So this is going to be the data for the first site. So you can see the amount of each species. And so that makes our capital N be 8 because there were 6 of species A, 1 of B, and 1 of C. You total that up or sum that up and you get an 8 for capital N. Here is going to be looking at them using this portion of the formula depending on the number found of each of those species. So for A, if we were to plug this in, it would be 6 minus 1, which would be 5, times N, which is 6 right here. And that's going to give us 30. You would do the same thing for species B, which would be 1 minus 1 is 0 times 1 is going to also be 0. So that's a 0 there. And then you would do this for C as well. It's 1, so you're going to get the same answer, 0. You then need to sum these because in the equation here, you have to sum that row. So it would be a total of 30. So we're going to plug in this information to the formula. So we have n up here is 8, so we would go 8 minus 1 is 7 times 8. And then down here, we already know the answer because we solved it here, is 30. So we would do that and divide the top number by 30. And that gives us our di, which is our Simpson reciprocal index number. We then do the same thing for the second data sample, which at site two, there were only two species, which might make you think right away that this is going to be a less diverse or a more unhealthy ecosystem because it only has two species. But they do seem rather even. There were four of each of the species. So you would do the same process we did with the other one. So looking at species A, there were four. You would plug it in, four minus one. That's going to be three times little n, which is four. So four times three gives you 12. You do the same thing for species D, which is going to give you the same answer because there were four. To get capital N, you just add these two together. So there were eight individuals found in this site, no matter what species they were from. And then the sum of is just adding these two together. That's 24. So you're going to plug that in here. 8 minus 1 is 7 times 8 is 56. Divided by, we already have that down here, 24. And that gives us 2.3. The higher this number is, remember, based off of these rules up here, the more healthy that site is. So in this case, it was more higher, it was high in evenness, and that made it more diverse than site one. Even though it had more species, the lack of evenness created a lower DI number or a Simpson reciprocal index number. So we would say site two was more biodiverse and was healthier. So what I want you to do now is I want you to do that with this picture up here. I want you to use these two communities. So instead of using percents down here, 
please add up each individual species. So this would be, for example, this first plant here is going to be species A, and I'm counting one, two, three, four. So there's four of that species. And then I'd go on to the pine tree, count them up. There's four of that species and so forth. And then I'm going to do the math, just like down here, for community one. Then I'm going to count up community two, and I'm going to do the math down here. So instead of only having three here, you're going to have four species. And here you wouldn't have two, you'd have four. So I want you to try to calculate this. And you can do this on paper and write it out, or you could do it on a Google Sheet. And then I want you to take a screenshot of it and upload it into Manage Back so I can see your work. That'll be due by the end of class today. When you finish this in class today, you can start working on your study guide to help you prepare for your quiz that's going to be on Wednesday. Let me know if you have any questions, and I hope that was helpful.